eel kit designed by Adafruit Industries and available to buy from www.protopic.co.uk. Uh, this is kit version 1.1. We'll just run through the bill of parts that you require to build the kit. In your kit, you should have the PCB board, a 551 or similar timing chip, a 2907 transistor, a 680 picofarad ceramic capacitor, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a 100 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor. And in this kit, we've got a, a quarter watt, 5%, 20 mega ohm resistor with the colour code red, black, blue, then gold. Then we have a quarter watt, 5% tolerance, 10 ohm resistor with the colour code brown, black, black, gold. Then we have a quarter watt 5% 10k resistor with the colour code brown, black, orange and gold. And a quarter watt 5% 300k resistor with the colour code orange, black, yellow, gold. We have a battery holder with the solder pins for a treble A battery. We have a, a very small 8 ohm speaker. We've got some copper foil tape here, all you'll need. Uh, on the back of this uh, device here we've got a small thumbtack. And... Uh, Obviously, we've got this pencil that will be required, we've got a cable tie and some wire. Now the other things that you're going to require to help you uh, build this project is a, a fairly decent multimeter, a solder sucker, uh, stock number 23550SKUCOTDR23553, available from protopic.co.uk some uh, nice resin cord solder, also available from protopic.co.uk Helping Hands magnifier glass, once again available and a fairly decent soldering iron, once again available The first component that we're going to put on the board, now that we've got the, the board conveniently clamped is resistor RA, which is a 10k ohm resistor and has the colour code brown, black, orange and gold We're going to want to put it into this location here, RA you can see the board is designed for using the axial lead resistors and also the surface mount resistors as well, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and bend the leads. Uh, just offer the resistor up to the board to try and gauge where you want to put the bend in. And using a nice pair of tweezers, we're using anti-static electronics tweezers here, also available on protopic.co.uk, and put a 90 degree bend on the leads. This should drop directly into these holes now. And just pull it through. Very tricky to do when you're trying to keep the camera in focus. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the board over just so that I can get in there to solder this component. Turning my soldering tip off camera just now. I'll just heat up the join. It's worth mentioning that this is an electronic solder iron. It regulates its tip temperature itself. Sometimes this is a blessing and sometimes it's a hindrance. Okay, that's the first component. RA soldered in nicely. And all we have to do is trim, trim those leads. Turn it back over again and we'll go on with the next component. and populate the board with the rest of the resistors remembering that they've got different values start off with the resistor RB here which is has a value of 300k uh, the colour code on that is orange, black, then yellow, gold bend the pins as before and just drop it into that location The next resistor is R1 
and this is going to be a 20 meg ohm resistor in this kit. R1 is just here. Now the colour code for this is red, black, blue, gold for the 20 meg ohm. Just bend the leads as before and drop that into location. Then the last one, which is 10 ohms, which is brown, black, black, goes into location R2 in the board. Very nice little simple kit to build. Now we're just going to remove this board from the vise, bend those legs outwards a little bit so we can turn the board over to solder. solder all of these resistors in place. Then we snip the legs nice and neatly, as close as you can to the board. Then I'll just bring that back into view so you can see the completed solder joins and also the, also the populated sections on the board. Put in the two ceramic capacitors, C1 and C3, that go into these locations here. C1 is going to be a, well it should be a blue 680 picofarad ceramic capacitor. Uh, we're fitting a, a yellow 680 picofarad ceramic capacitor. And C3 is a yellow 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. It's very important to get the, them the correct way around on the board, however saying that it's not important that you get the polarity perfect as ceramic capacitors aren't polarised. So C3 is the 0.1 microfarad, C1 is the 680 picofarad. We're just going to drop them in in exactly the same way as we did the resistors, turn them around and solder them. You can see that the capacitors have been soldered on to the board, C1 and C3. The next thing to do is to put into the timer chip, the uh, 551 timer chip. Now it's got quite an obvious location in the board, you can see the 8 pins there. Uh, you can fit the dual in line chip or if you wanted to, if you wanted to get the extra chip you could also uh, solder in the surface mount version if you're feeling adventurous. Now, you know I'm sure you know this but it's very important which way around to put the integrated circuit. You can see the silk screening there uh, indicates pin 1 on the chip and that ties up with the little, uh, the little impression mark there. That's pin 1 and that's pin 1. So we just drop the pin, the chip, directly into the board like that. Now, as with all devices when they come out of the packs, the legs are always slightly splayed, so you have to be very careful when trying to align the pins up with the board. The good thing about that is that when you turn the board upside down, they tend to hold themselves in just through friction. So it makes it a lot simpler to uh, solder a device sometimes than it is to solder a, a discrete component. Only apply heat for as long as you need it to get the solder melted and flowing into the join. We don't want to overheat the device. Of course, the, the other way to do this, uh, and the proper way to do this, would be to put a IC socket in, in here. But since we're just sort of building this kit as a tutorial, we'll just use the parts that are included in the kit. Now, there's the device mounted the correct way around. You can see that the pins do stick up quite an amount from the board so just for good practice I'm going to trim those pins down a little bit. 
pins on the uh, device we're going to fit the transistor nice and easy this one the uh, the shape on the silk screen board is in the shape of a D and the transistor is also in the shape of a D so we're going to go ahead and put that in the hole you just have to kind of splay the legs out a little bit as they go in and then gently push it in it doesn't have to sit down too far you know you're not looking for it to sit completely flush on the board uh, just about that and then as you can see the legs are nicely splayed out so it's held in place it's going to make it a real cinch to solder you might notice that I'm applying solder to the soldering iron uh, rather than the old adage of heat the heat the join not the solder that's just to get the soldering iron kick started with it being an electronic temperature control and we're just going to trim these legs as well lovely what we want to do is we're going to want to take some of that height out of that transistor sitting very proud so we're going to very carefully just take a finger and push that face flat against the circuit board just so it's nice and flush yeah just like that. On the agenda is the electrolytic capacitor. Now these are polarized. You can see on one side it's got a minus sign, and on the circuit board it's got the positive sign. So make sure the minus side doesn't go to the positive side. And now you want to put that through so that we leave enough legs to be able to push that flat against the circuit board. So I'm just going to push that through a little bit more, and I'm going to solder it. And then I'll show you what I mean. This helping hands magnifier really is handy. Okay, so you can see the problem there, too much height, just take a finger and bend it over, nice and flat. Okay. Attach the speaker, now there's two methods of attaching the speaker, one using wires, uh, so you've got uh, some wires connected between the board and the terminals on the speaker itself, or there's a a better technique, a more compact technique of mounting the speaker directly onto the PCB board. So if we look at the speaker here, you've got two solder connections. I'll just use this uh, cable tie. You've got two solder connections. Essentially what you want to do is connect the speaker plus to one of these and the speaker minus to the other one of these. That's going to have some wires and the speaker is going to be sitting there. What we want to do is we want to mount the speaker directly onto the board and effectively what we're going to do is we're going to apply a lot of solder to these to pack that plate up with solder place the speaker on top and then melt the solder down while gently putting pressure on the speaker so that it takes that solder join nicely what we'll end up with is a really flush mounted PC a uh, really flush mounted speaker sorry okay so what I've done is I've uh, uh, not so much tinned but more like applied a lot of solder to this join because I want this to melt down and make a really good join I've also done the same on the speaker just applied some more solder onto the speaker connections there I'm just going to take this speaker and line it up with those solder plates I'm going to very gingerly watch my fingers heat up that solder in that plate before it gets a chance to go off I want to get in there same on this plate and that's it and now what you should see is that we've got a very good electrical connection to the speaker at both sides 